it's time for the big story. And a retired at top CIA chief, James Olson, has said that the West must take out Vladimir Putin to end the war in Ukraine. Would this be the right thing to do? Is it ethical? Is it legal? Could it be done? Who would replace Putin? How would the world react? To look into this extraordinary idea, I'm delighted to welcome former strategic intelligence analyst Ewan Grant. Mr Grant, welcome to Thank Mark you. Dernan tonight. Thank you. Uh, first of all, is it logistically possible to take out Vladimir Putin? Very, very difficult indeed. He has multiple levels of security with a lot of fail-safes. What might those fail-safes be? Um, there would be dummy cars, du mm. duplicate convoys. Pretending that he's in one of those cars? Yeah. Um, duplicate helicopters. Right. Um, switching the bodyguards at times between different services because you've got the FSB, of course, but you've also got the special presidential guard and, of course, you've got the backup of the military. Very, very difficult. Does he have indeed. body doubles as well? Does he have actors playing him? I wouldn't rule it out. I suspect probably not. Mm. Um, and they, of course, would only work at certain distances. They wouldn't really work close up. Um, but I wouldn't rule it out. Such things have been known. We didn't certainly saw that with Saddam Hussein, did we? Most of the world would like to see the back of this man. Why is it so difficult to make this strike? Well, we shouldn't do it. It's quite simply no. I, I suspect Mr. O Mr. Olson will have his motives for mm. saying that. He might, he might want to be on a chat show. Um, no, absolutely not. This would harm opinion in the global south. It would harm those who are equivocal in the West, and there are far too many of those who are apologists for Russia, not Russians, but apologists for Russia. Um, this would be an absolute disaster. If you were in a time machine, you would go back and you would take out Adolf Hitler? Yes, we were directly at war, and um, he was, of course, the commander-in-chief. Mind you, of course, Putin's the commander-in-chief in, mm. in name and in fact. Um, we are not... We are in a proximate war. We're not in a direct could, could, war. Could and should Ukraine take Putin out? Zelensky himself? That is a different thing because, of course, it's a direct war there and he is a combatant. Uh, and, of course, we have good reason to believe that they certainly tried to capture him, and I wouldn't be surprised they wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill Zelensky. So, actually, so that's a str different strategically, their, their intention probably is to take, to take Putin out because they consider themselves at war with Russia. It won't be their top priority. Mm. Their top priority will be to hit targets and key personnel. And remember, at the moment, he's out of reliable range. Could taking Vladimir Putin out create more problems than we currently have? I'm talking now of replacing him, mm. not not necessarily... He, he may die of natural so you, causes. So you see this as a, a, a rather a political conversation? Yes, very much so. It's right. not a military one. All right. And, and, and what are the circumstances by which he's replaced? How does that happen? With chaos and in brutal infighting and with absolutely zilch uh, attention to the Constitution and the Duma, the Russian parliament. Mm. This would be a pure power, power play. OK, and that would be a coup in the Kremlin, essentially? Well, a, a struggle for power in the way that it was after the death of Stalin. Now, are you persuaded that Vladimir Putin is very ill and dying? No. I think the evidence on that is ambiguous. We, we have to be careful to get into wishful thinking. We mm. would like that, but let, the fact that we would like that to happen doesn't mean it will. We have a lot to of be stories prepared floating for the around long that, haul. A lot of stories floating around that he's, he's on steroids, yeah. that he's got cancer. Uh, he was on that famous, the world's largest desk during COVID because he was so yeah. petrified of catching the virus. I can assure you Western intelligence will be doing all it mm. can both through um, signals, intelligence and communications, but, of course, the Russians be very, very careful on that. Um, but more, I think, good old-fashioned diplomacy and human intelligence mm. to try and get hints. But it's almost certainly only going to be hints, not proof. So what is the solution to this conflict? We have to double down on support for Ukraine. We have to, re we have to go to a semi-wartime economy as far as possible across the entire West not just NATO, Five Eyes, which is Australia, mm. and with 
key technological and industrial allies like Japan and Korea and be prepared for the long haul. But what does living under the circumstances of a sort of semi-war situation look like for my viewers and listeners? Yes, I'm afraid it means uh, higher taxes for longer and um, higher prices. And more, more borrowing and cost of energy. And, and what about the timeline? From your expertise, how long do you think this conflict has to run? Are we talking months or years? Years. Um, I had a, a historian on the show, Martin Whittock, last year, and he, he said it was going to be the forever war. Is that overstating it? No. That might be a, it, an exaggeration, maybe. All wars eventually come to an end, but it depends how you define them as ending. I've worked in Ukraine on the border with Transnistria, the Russian mm. um, puppet state carved out of Moldova, wholly illegally, of course, and not recognised, and indeed, not, it's worth remembering, not recognised by Russia itself either. Now, that has been going on since the collapse of the Soviet Union. We're now over 30 years. Is Putin the problem or is he the potential solution? Do the West need to hand this man a diamond-encrusted golden ladder to climb down? I'm not sure he would take it. Um, there's no harm in trying. And hand the Russians the Crimea. Crimea well, and course, allow him to go back to the Russian people and say, we've won. I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out that way. Um, there is the real possibility of unleashing the Black Sea Fleet for a full-scale blockade of Odessa and indeed down to Ukraine's international border on the Danube. Um, if, if the Ukrainians got near to Crimea. But you've highlighted the key location. After Kiev, the key location is not the Donbass, it's the approach to Crimea. 